From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning, dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. It's so good to be together with you again today, and we're going to have a great time this week talking about a subject that is such an exciting thing. <laughs> we're talking about fasting and the blessing of the fast. And someone may say, exciting? I mean, I remember the last time I tried to fast, I got so hungry. I know what that's like. I tell you, when I first thought I better get to fasting. I'm a Christian now, and I heard other Christians talk about fasting. I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this fast thing. And so I decided one day, I'm going to fast now, and I just stopped eating. And I remember I was spending time in prayer and getting very, very hungry. You know, after a while, you start to feel, man, this is really hungry. And I went through to the kitchen one day, and I was just uh, poured myself a glass of water, I was looking out of the kitchen window, busy drinking the water. And before I knew it, I was just, I didn't even know how it happened. I just was busy looking out the window, drinking water. And I looked in my hand, and there was a piece of dry spaghetti, you know, that before you cook it. And I had a little piece left, and I was crunching on the spaghetti. And I thought, what happened here? I mean, yeah, I'm busy eating the spaghetti. I'm supposed to be fasting. And subconsciously, I had leaned over to one of Janine's, she had a little jar with all the spaghetti in it, and I had taken, I was busy eating dry spaghetti. I thought, man, what's happening here? I felt so bad and so guilty. I thought, man, I really missed it. I'm supposed to be fasting. And I realized, hang on, what happened here was I have got stuck into some religious ritual, and I better find out what fasting really is. It's obviously something that I'm missing. And I started studying out the Word of God and finding out what fasting is. And I'll tell you, to me, when I saw that God had ordained the fast for an awesome, awesome reason, and I saw the truth behind it, and I saw how it worked, why the fast was so powerful, I tell you, it transformed my life and has become such a powerful part of our ministry. We take all of our staff members away. Our, our pastors, the senior leaders of this church, those that are uh, leading and directing and helping this ministry to be a success. And what we do is we draw aside together as staff and spend the time in fasting. We go away, we get away out the office, we go and stay somewhere in the mountains with no food, nothing else, just bottles of water and the Word of God. And then we seek God. We spend time with Him in a time of fasting and God speaks to us. Every year, He's given us direction and insight and wisdom for the year ahead of us. And this year is going to be no different. And what we do is, in the beginning, it was just me when we were starting out the ministry and Janine. And then in time, as we took on more pastors, they joined us in this fast. And now what's happened is uh, the congregation, all of our leaders, the cell leaders, all the members of the congregation, everybody comes together to fast as well. Now, they don't necessarily come to where we are meeting as a leadership team, but the whole church fasts in a time of listening for themselves. What is God telling them in terms of their call to this ministry? How the vision that we will come back with, what is their part in making that vision come to pass? It is a phenomenal time. And I want to invite you as partners enjoy the fast with us and believe that God will give you insight and give you direction as to what you are doing in the kingdom of God because God does that he speaks clearly during a time of fasting I'm going to show you how that works I'm going to teach you what fasting is I'm going to show you how to fast correctly there's a right way and there's a wrong way and also the reason behind the fast what is the purpose of the fast if you find out what God's purpose is for anything then you'll do it with more fervency and you'll see better results by doing it that way. So let's have a look at it. Matthew chapter 6. If you could open your Bible in the meantime to Matthew 6, let's pray. 
Father, I thank you for your time today with us. We thank you that you are the one that has called us. We thank you for this time that we can spend with you in round your word. And we pray for your anointing upon that word, that you'd quicken to our hearts the truths that we're about to learn. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a look here. Matthew 6, verse 16. Jesus speaking, he says, Moreover, when you fast. That's an interesting statement because, you know, as Christians say, but wasn't fasting Old Testament? Isn't that how they used to fast? And isn't that the way, you know, are we supposed to be fasting today? There was a time when Jesus was walking with the disciples and uh, the people around him said, Don't your disciples fast? And Jesus said, Listen, when the bridegroom's with them, they don't have to fast. But when he's taken away, then they will fast. So we know that there is a time that we need to be fasting. So he says here, when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. So when I read that, I realized this is not really something that I should be deciding, do I feel like fasting or not? It's obviously, as far as Jesus is concerned, it's a given. Christians fast. Our children of God will be fasting. He says, when you fast. So now it's established that we are going to be fasting. He says, do not be like the hypocrites. So it is possible to be hypocritical in the fast. And we don't want to do that, do we? So let's have a look here. He says, Do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. <laughs> it's always interesting. You're going to have somebody who thinks that by doing spiritual things, they're impressing people. Oh, God says that when we give our bodies as a living sacrifice, it's our reasonable service. In other words, it's what's expected. And so uh, I don't try and impress anybody with what I do. That's why when Jesus spoke about, you know, when he spoke in his word and he said that, um, that our righteous deeds are as filthy rags. You know, so often we think if we do certain things and we show people, we, <laughs> we impress people with how we pray and we go to church every Sunday and we sing our songs. Well, people will really think we're spiritual. And we think that somehow it carries weight, and it carries no weight. In fact, it's a stench in the nostrils of God. The Bible says that it's a filthy garment. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to be a stench in the nostrils of God. I want to make sure that whatever I do is done because he led me to do it as between me and him. It's, uh, it's really the way I ought to be as a Christian. So I don't pray to impress people. I pray because that's what I do. I'm a child of God, and it's me and my Father, and we spend time fellowshipping together. And I spend time singing songs, not because I want to impress people with how well I sing. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, don't, I, I can sing a song, but I wouldn't be able to stand up on a stage and impress anybody with it. But even if I could, it's not there to be a show. It's there to worship God and to bless Him and to honor Him. And so the same way with fasting. I don't fast to try and let people think, wow, you can really go hungry for a long time, eh? Wow, you must be really something special. And that's what these people were doing. They were trying to show people, look, I'm fasting. You get people that will walk in and... Uh, let's just keep reading before I say that because I want you to see something. It says, verse 17, But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but your Father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So, Yari says that we shouldn't appear to men to be fasting. Yeah, there's also a place that you can get really religious if you're not careful about it. You know, you find someone and say, you offer them a piece of cake. Say, yeah, have a piece of cake or have a sandwich or whatever. No, no, no. Oh, I, I don't quite. No, come on. I mean, I baked it for you. You can enjoy it. Have It's yours. No, no, no. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Why not? No, I really... I can't tell you. I, I can't say anything, you know. What, what What's going on? Are you fasting or something? Well, yeah, yeah. Now, hang on. What are you doing? So the person says, no, I'm, I'm you know, I've got to be secret about this. No, that's not what the verse is saying. It's not saying be secret so no one knows about it. The fact is, you know, some people can be so secret about it, they're telling everybody in a clandestine way. That's just as religious as the person that tries to brag on their fasting. No, it shouldn't be that way. I just simply choose a fast. And when I fast, even in a proclaimed fast, everybody knows you're fasting. 
If somebody offers me something, I said, I really appreciate that. Thank you. But right now, I'm busy fasting. I don't take glory from it. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just stating I, I'm busy with the fast. Thank you. And get on with the conversation. And that's what Jesus is saying. He says, if you do it to try and impress people, you're going to get a reward. And it's going to be the wrong reward. And I don't want the wrong reward. I don't need anybody to think, wow, Alan's really something, hey? No, that's not what we do this for. There's a reason and a purpose behind it. So that's why I just want to get through to your thinking that number one is that Jesus said when you fast. So this is not something that you might do. It's, we're all going to be doing it. And he says when that is so, you do it with a specific reason, for a specific purpose. And in fact, he gives that reason in verse 18. He says, do not appear to men to be fasting, but your father who is in the secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. In other words, there is a reward in the fast. And that's the reason we fast, is because God has given it as a way of receiving from him. You get that? So we understand that by fasting, I can expect a reward. Jesus said so. The Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So I'm getting ready for a reward. That's the reason for the purpose, uh, the reason for the fast. The fast has a purpose. I don't just fast because it's time. I don't just fast because I feel bad as I won't be a good Christian if I don't fast. I don't just fast because everybody else is fasting. I've got to make a decision the fast is for a reward. There is a specific target. There's a reason for it. And once you know the reason, it becomes easy. Because, uh, in other words, I will fast. I remember once, uh, very right at the beginning of my young Christian life, I'd just been born again, just been saved. And I knew that I was called to the ministry. I was spending a lot of time with God and saying, Lord, I know I'm called, but what am I called to? I can really sense a call, but am I an evangelist or am I a teacher? You know, what, what is my specific calling? I can sense that I am called to full-time ministry, but I don't want to miss it and land up in the wrong place. So I spent time, where am I going? What, where should I be? Where should I be training? Where should I be listening? What messages should I be listening to? Who should I be having as my teachers, as my mentors. I'm, I need to know these things because I want to be successful in what you've called me to do. And as I was praying, the Lord said to me, fast over the Christmas period and I will reveal everything to you. My first response was, fast when? Over Christmas? Man, you got to, uh, you know, it's kind of you want to, I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Not that, but I knew it wasn't the devil. This is God. I mean, does he know that Christmas is when all the nice food is there? <laughs> I mean, nah, come on, every house you go to has got food and puddings and, and you know, and nice things to eat and everything. God's saying fast over the Christmas period. I realized, whoa, I mean, I'm just a young Christian. Yeah, I remember what I had already messed up on a fast. I better find out something about this fast. And uh, he uh, heard the Spirit of God say to me that uh, the Lord has placed it on my mother. Go and speak to mom, and she will explain to you how the fast works. So I remember going to my mother and calling her aside and going into the room one day, into her bedroom, and saying, closing the door because I didn't want anybody else to. I said, there's some things I need to discuss with you. And she said, yes, God has called you to plant a church in Cape Town you need to fast over Christmas period to hear from him. And uh, you've come to me to find out what the fast is about. I said to them, flabbergast. I said, wow, this thing is awesome and it's already working. All right, well, let's get to it. And I remember drawing aside that day for the fast. We put it aside. We got together and uh, Janine and myself and my mom, and we started praying and searching the scriptures, interceding. We were now fasting. And within five hours, I had the whole call mapped out. Everything that God had said to us, uh, he told me where we were going to be planting the church. He said how it's going to happen. He showed me who I need to be training with, where I need to be ministering, where I need to be serving the Lord. It was mapped out, the whole thing of how I would be called into the ministry. And then I turned to the scripture and it said, uh, you fasted and you called on me and I answered. I thought, what is the Lord saying about that? He says, it's over. 
I said, but I'm not even hungry yet. I mean, <laughs> well, I was. It was five hours later. You know, I hadn't eaten. But uh, the Lord said, no, I have answered you. And I realized, you know, that's how powerful that fast is. You don't have to fast as Daniel did 21 days. I mean, people have 21-day fasts now, you know. We're going to fast for 21 days. Why? 21 days. Why? Daniel fasted 21 days. <laughs> Hang on now. Daniel didn't set out to say, I'm going to fast for 21 days. He started fasting and it took 21 days for the answer to come. If it took 22, everybody would be having 22-day fasts. But they don't. It took the angel 21 days to get to Daniel. Now everybody has 21-day fasts. You know, I don't want to mock anybody. It's not a criticism. It's just if you're doing it and God says do a 21-day fast, then fine, go for it. If that's what God's leading you to do, do it. But we don't just fast so that we can do 21 days of going hungry. There's a reason for it. There's a purpose. What is God calling us to do? And Daniel fasted for a purpose. He needed an answer. And he was calling on God. And the angel said, the first day you prayed, I was dispatched. Well, there you go. I mean, Daniel set aside the fast, started praying, and angels on his way. But the problem was, as the angel was traveling down to the earth, there was demonic spirits in control of that region. And they were set up in heavenly places all over. I mean, they set up a network and the angel couldn't get through that. And he had to call on Michael and all the warring angels. And there was a massive battle going on. All the while, Daniel's on the earth. He's just fasting and he's praying and seeking God. The angels are busy having a battle for 21 days. They fought and eventually punched a hole through that thing. And they, that angel got through and got down to Daniel and said, right, I'm here now. It took 21 days, but I left the day you called. I want you to know God didn't miss you. He'd sent me and I was my fault. It wasn't my fault, but this is what happened. The angel, you know, these other demons and things stopped me from getting there. Well, praise God, that's no longer there. Jesus died. He paid the price for us and he tore that thing down. That's no longer there. The angels, the Bible says in Hebrews, have been dispatched to the earth. They've been sent forth. And so all the angels are here. So I don't have to punch the heavens and pray through and, you know, pot holes into the, into the demonic realm. Uh, those demons have been destroyed. Their authority has been removed from them. Now, you've got the authority. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And the angels are right here. So, you know, technically you don't. Sometimes there are things that, that will take time. But I have found personally that when it really takes long and I'm busy praying and fasting, there are issues in my life that have become the hindrances. And so what the fast does is it disciplines the flesh, helps me get the flesh out the way. And when I get the flesh out the way, then I'm able to hear God far clearer and that way get the answer. That's exactly what happened on the first time that I fasted for this ministry is within five hours we had the answer. So, now that I've received the answer, there's no need to fast any longer. I don't fast just to stay hungry. Uh, there's a reason and a purpose. And that's what I'm going to spend this week on, is showing you from the Word of God why the fast is there and the purpose for the fast, and then also training you. I'm going to show you how to fast. If you've never fasted before, <laughs> it's an exciting week. I'm going to show you how to get into the fast, how to enjoy it, how to hear from God while you're fasting, and then at the end of that, how to break that fast, how to come out of it successfully, because you can also mess that up and land up uh, being physically hurt, and I don't want that to happen. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, just to, we, we're out of time for today, but I just want to read another scripture for you. Come with me to Joel chapter 1 and verse 14. The Word of God speaking as this consecrate a fast, Call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Now here we see that uh, this is what we call a called fast, a sanctified fast. That's when you say to the congregation, listen guys, we're all coming together to fast and the reason we're fasting is to cry out to the Lord. We're going to be fasting in order to connect with heaven. Now, Revelation chapter 3 verse 8, Jesus says that he opens a door that no man can shut. The door's already open. So we're not fasting to try and punch the door open. We're not fasting trying to break through the heavenlies. No, the door is open. 
So we have open access with heaven here in the earth. The blessing has been spoken. Remember, God blessed Abraham, uh, blessed Adam right in the beginning, and then He blessed Abraham with that same blessing. And the blessing is be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Now that blessing is still yours. It's alive today. You can be fruitful. You can multiply. Fill the earth with the glory of God. Subdue it and take dominion. And so when we come together to fast, it's to see that blessing manifest. You go and have a look at chapter 2 in verse 15. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Now Zion is a type of the church. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from the chamber and the bride from her dressing room. And let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare your people, O Lord. Now, Obviously, with weeping, uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the whole congregation breaking down and all wailing. Weeping in the Old Testament talks of repentance. Today, in the New Testament, we know that we have been given the blood of Jesus. It, has sta- it still stands testimony that we are forgiven. And when we confess our sin to God and ask Him to forgive us, He cleanses us. And so it's a time of repentance, putting aside all the distractions of the flesh, of the world, And saying, I turn away from that, and I turn to God. Now, I want to hear from heaven. And then during that time of fasting, we spend a lot of time praying. Spend a lot of time worshiping God, reading the word, and listening. Listening for His Spirit. It's a great time to draw aside and just wait on God. I'm telling you, you'll notice your spirit man comes alive. You hear His Spirit. It fills you. His presence anoints you. You receive His word. And from that moment on of fasting, you'll see that all these spiritual truths become activated in a reality in your life. Now, we had a time for today, but I'm going to show you how to do this. But until then, I've got something else that I'd like to share with you. And so, I'll see you right on. Alan Bag Ministries is coming to your area. This weekend, Dr. Alan Bagg will be ministering at Christian Family Church, Johannesburg, the ministry of Drs. Theo and Beverly Volmarts. For information regarding this engagement, please contact us at these details. Fasting is not just about not eating. There's a reason for not eating. The series by Pastor Alan is an in-depth study on fasting. When you fast, you can expect a reward. This series will shed light on how you go about fasting. It will reveal exactly how you put fasting into action. This series will help you to discover the benefits of fasting God's way. These teachings will renew your mind on fasting. When you find out what these truths are, put them into action in your life, you're going to look forward to fasting. Discover the truth about fasting. So make sure you get your set today. Contact us at these details and learn how to fast God's way. Enjoy your times of fasting. We're talking about over six hours of training, of studying, finding out what fasting is, why God gave the fast to us, and the power behind the fast. And I tell you, you're going to want to fast. In fact, you have to say, listen, that's enough now. I need to eat some food to live. So get a hold of this. You're going to enjoy it and see your spiritual life grow to another level. My dear friend, if you are watching this program and you've never yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know He loves you. He loves you so much, He paid the price for you. He gave you eternal life that if you would just believe that, you would not perish but have that eternal life for yourself. And so today I want to lead you in a prayer. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess it with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's pray that prayer together right now. You giving your life to Jesus, say this with me. Say it out loud there with me while you're watching. Say, Dear Father, thank you so much. I know you love me and you sent Jesus to die for me. I believe that with all my heart. So today, Jesus, I call you Lord. You are my Savior, and I know because I do this, I am born again. 
a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, friend. I tell you, that's the most powerful prayer you could ever pray. You are born again and saved, and I have the gift for you. There's some things for you to read and sow that into your life. I'll also pay the postage for it. So just write to me at that address or call me on that phone number, and as soon as we have your details, I'll send that to you, and you'll get it just in a matter of a few days. Well, that's all we have for time for today. Tomorrow we're going to carry on studying this awesome subject. I look forward to being with you there. I love you dearly. And this is Pastor Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can. 